What's up you guys, Nick here with a special treat for you today, race recap of the men's 1500 world championship final that took place here in my hometown of Eugene, Oregon. Now last week, we race recapped the men's 800, a phenomenal tactical affair. This race is fast, and I know you guys love a fast mile, so let's roll tape. The 12 fastest men on the planet right here. Now everyone's watching Jakob Ingbrigtsen. He's from Norway, he's the defending Olympic gold medalist. He is the man to beat. However, Kenya is the country to beat. The last five world championship 1500s in a row, that's right, Kenya won them. So it's Kenya versus the world, it's Yaka versus the world. Who's gonna come out on top? And right now, just after 200 meters, it is Kip Seng of Kenya out front. Kenya got three athletes in this race. No surprise, one of them is out front. That's McSween of Australia. He starts to move up into position. Kip Seng still out front. Now, watch as these guys start to really jostle with each other. They're trying to feel each other out, trying to find exactly where in this pack they wanna be. It's starting to string out down the home stretch. That makes me think that the pace is actually pretty quick. We're gonna find out at the 400 meter split. You've got Kip Seng out front, then McSween, then people fighting for third place. That's actually Jake Whiteman in third on the rail. You're gonna to wanna to watch him right now as they come through 400 meters. 55.5 seconds, that is blazing. That is really fast, that's sub 330 pace for 1500 meters, that's sub 350 pace for a mile. And that's Kip Sang still out front, his Kenyan colleague right by him. And there's Jakob, finally Jakob comes into the mix. He doesn't like to be mid-pack, this is a guy who likes to be out front, he likes to squeeze the pace, he likes a good, fast, honest pace. Again, the class of the field, they typically like a faster, more honest pace. It, 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 the faster it is, the more honest it is, the more the BS is kind of like pushed out the back, the elbowing, the shoving, the jostling for position. He doesn't have to worry about any of that right now. As he moves into first, he kind of looks over his shoulder. If you're a Jakob Ingridsen fan, you're like, this guy, there's no way he can lose. If you saw him run in Tokyo, he loves a pace like this. He loves to just get out front and work this race, and that's exactly what he's doing. Coming through 800 meters, let's see if they slowed down any. 151.9, they haven't slowed down at all, that's a 56. And Jakob, he makes sure that pace stays honest. You could tell as the pace started to slow down a little bit in lap two, he didn't want that, he went right to the front. This is what a world champion or Olympic champion does. They take control of the race. Now, you got Whiteman in second. He's actually a sleeper right here. You know, he's kind of buried on the rail. Uh, he'd have to make a big move out to lane two if he wants to make a move. Obviously, with a fast pace, you don't have to worry about that quite as much. On a slower pace, you gotta worry about that a lot. Coming down the home stretch for the third time. This is where the men's 15, this is where they call it a race is made or broken, right? That third lap, it's the hardest lap. It's the one where you really wanna slow down, but you can't let the pace slow down, especially not if you're the leader. 400 meters to go, and it's still Jakob Ingridsen out front, but there's all of these world-class runners just leeching up him. This is one of the reasons I never like to be out front. Look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven athletes just tucked right behind him. 247, 248, 248 through 1200 meters. This is where they have to start squeezing, and that's exactly what Jake Whiteman does. He moves around into that pole position. He's on the shoulder of the defending Olympic gold medalist, but that's not enough for him. He tries to beat him to the rail. If you guys are gonna try to challenge somebody to the rail, you gotta get around them and get to the rail. It doesn't matter if they're the defending Olympic gold medalist. You make your move, you make it count, and that's what Whiteman does. But did it take too much out of him? As Jakob, he kind of resurges here. He moves up on Whiteman's shoulder. He's about to dump on Whiteman. Did Whiteman go too early? Whiteman and Ingridsen. Jake and Jakob, who's gonna win? Great Britain versus Norway. Jakob looks around and he's done it. Jake Whiteman has broken the Olympic gold medals. And look at the look on his face. Upset of the century. That's the second time ever that Great Britain has won a world championship title in the men's 15. And the last time, I think it was 40 years ago, 50 years ago, Steve Cram. Steve, sorry if I just dated you there. But that was an upset for the ages. I got three takeaways. Takeaway number one, you love to see it. I am a huge Jakob Ingridsen fan. I think he's a phenomenal talent, but who doesn't love a good upset? And Jake Whiteman, you know, I hadn't heard of him before this race, no offense, Jake, but he just ran a perfect race. He was content to sit in that pack. You know, when other athletes started to make a move, he was fine just sitting on the rail. When I talk about matching moves, when I talk about making moves in the eight, it's a split second decision. You don't have any room for air in the eight. In the 15, 
It's maybe not a split second decision, it's a full second decision. Whiteman was so patient. And I love to see when a 1500 meter runner is patient because patience can pay dividends in the 15. When he made his move down the back stretch with 300 meters to go, he starts to squeeze it. I thought, oh my gosh, he's gone too soon. He should have just sat on Jakob's shoulder. Just stay there, just stay there. Control the race until the last 100, then make your move. I was sure that Whiteman had gone too early. I was wrong. He ran hard, he made the move, he fought for the rail. It's a power move. He must have known he had that in him. I'm just so freaking excited that he chose to make that move then and not wait till the last hundred. You know, only we know our bodies. Your coaches can tell us one thing. You can listen to my points here, my race recaps, and hear them in your head. But it's not until you're on the track with 300 or 200 meters to go, listening to your breath, listening to your heart, that you know what you have inside you. Or for that matter, listening to your competitors and knowing if they're hurting. Whiteman may have recognized, may have, we say, smelled blood in the water like a shark. He may have recognized that Jakob was hurting and he knew he had to break him down the back stretch. That's really exactly what he did. And then he rebroke him down the home stretch. When Jakob looks around with 10, 20 meters to go, Jakob knows there's nothing, nothing that he can do. Jake Whiteman is the world champion. Congrats, Jake. Takeaway number two, congrats to all the medalists. You know, meddling at these world championships is so hard. We just, you know, shouted out Jake for a perfect race. Jakob ran a great race. Jakob did not lose this race. He just got beat. And that happens sometimes. Um, I think that if I was Jakob, I mean, he could have tried to sit a little bit longer on lap two. I don't know. You know, again, this is this is each athlete playing to their own strengths and weaknesses. And last but not least, of course, the bronze medalist, Katir from Spain. He was in the back of that pack almost the whole race. Sometimes that works out, especially on a fast pace. When athletes get caught up with the excitement of a world championship final, they get carried along to a pace that they can't hold. And sometimes those athletes that are tucked into last, they spread that peanut butter a little bit more evenly. They kick like a train, and that's exactly what Katir did. Well done, Katir here. Those are your medalists. I have one more takeaway, my third and final takeaway for you Jakob Ingridsen fans. I don't want to spoil anything in case you didn't watch the world championships, but he goes on to win the world title in the 5k and it is a phenomenal race. His first 5k world title and I want to know what you guys want me to recap next. I can recap that 5k race. I'm happy to recap any race that you guys watched from the 2022 world championships. You know, I'm here to give you guys what you want. Is it knowledge? Is it entertainment? Let me know in the comments below. I'm hoping that you guys are finding something from these race recaps useful. Hit the subscribe button. See you very soon.